two, we are faced with a quadratic equation that has repeated roots. Now let's get started. So we have a quadratic equation that looks like this. This will be always our first step to copy the question onto the writing board, right? So now bear in mind that to solve any quadratic equation questions like this, you always, always have to equate your quadratic equation to be zero. So whenever you have any terms on the right-hand side of the equation, you have to bring it over to the left-hand side. So in this case, we have 2x squared minus x minus kx plus 5 minus k equals to 0. Okay, it is important that we must always equate it to 0. And we always group the x with all the x together, all the constant terms together. Now, the next thing is, of course, we try to identify which are the coefficient of x squared and which are the coefficient of x. So in this case, you see that here, you have a negative x minus kx. So you know that you can take out the common factor of k, I'm sorry, take out the common factor of x, and you will be left with 1 plus k, okay, in a bracket, multiplied by x. And then, of course, you have plus 5 minus k, which is your constant term, right? So in the quadratic equation um, way that we see that, this will be our a, right? which is the coefficient of x squared, and this thing will be our b, which is the coefficient of x, and this will be our c, which is the constant term. So since we know that we are having a case of a repeated roots, we know that our b squared minus 4ac will be equal to 0. Now, since this is our b, remember that this b includes the negative sign. So we are going to have negative 1 plus k, okay? whole thing, you're going to put it in a bracket and square it. Alright, this is your b square. Right, minus 4ac, there you go, will be equal to 0. Now, this is where you got to be a bit more careful than usual. Now, some people, okay, which is wrong, I should just tell you the common careless mistake that people make. Some people will mistake this as this. Okay, now, although it looks rather similar, I must admit they look really quite similar, they are totally different. Okay, now you, what is the difference and where is the difference? This is where you got to be careful and this is where you got to know and understand this very, very well. Now, this term, this b, okay, which is a number, this number is a negative number. Now, you're going to square this negative number. Alright, as you have learned way long before, that whenever you square any number, the result will be a positive number. So whenever you square any number, so this negative number that you're going to square now will become a positive number no matter what k is. On the other hand, what you have here, now remember what we said, that whenever we square something, it will always be a positive number. So this term here will always be a positive number, isn't it? So when, when we have a positive number here and we have negative outside, the whole thing, the entire thing will become a negative number. Okay? It may be a little bit confusing now. So let me just quickly go through this with an example of a number. The gist of the story here is all about this. For example, you have a negative 2. Alright? Now, Compare this with this. Okay? For this, you will get positive 4 as your answer. For this, you will get negative 4 as the answer. So, this is what the difference is all about. Okay? So, I hope you can remember this very, very well. And whenever you see uh, a, a negative sign in front of a bracket that is part of a, uh, that is a coefficient of x or x squared, I urge you to be extra careful and put in the extra bracket because normally what other students, many students tend to do is that they try to, you know, think, they, they, they will think that this extra bracket is redundant. It's totally useless and all. Okay, so um, I hope this will bring you to attention, something like a careless mistake that people normally will make. And now that I've highlighted this careless mistake to you, hopefully you will never make that careless mistake. So, as I was saying, 
Now this thing will become a positive, okay, and the positive will be a k plus one bracket square. So when you expand it, okay, you will get something like this. All right. Now this will be a minus eight. So minus eight multiplied by five, eight multiplied by five will give me a forty. All right, and uh, negative eight multiplied by negative k that will give me a positive eight k will be equal to zero. So after you simplify, you will get k square plus 10k minus 39 will be equal to 0. Alright, now of course this quadratic equation is something that you can solve rather easily. Okay, and um, factorizing it, you get k minus 3 and k plus 30, sorry, 13. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so k minus 3 and k plus 13. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Will be equal to 0. So, Okay, I think we need a little bit more space here, so let's scroll down. Okay, there we go. So, we know that k is equal to 3 or k is equal to negative 13. There you go. Okay, we have calculated the possible values of k, which satisfy what the question wants us to do. So, this will be the answer. Okay, but what is a little bit more important is that you have to understand what you have just done. Okay, what you have just done is that you have just found out that when k is equal to 3, and when you substitute in when k is equal to 3 into this quadratic equation, okay, this second line here, we put in k equals to 3 here, and put in k equals, equals to 3 here, alright, and you work out the b squared minus 4ac, you will get a 0. Likewise, if you put in k as a negative 13 into this equation, alright, and you work out the b squared minus 4ac, you will get 0 as well. For any other k values, for example, like k equals to 1 or k equals to 0, you will not get b squared minus 4ac to be equal to 0. So this is what it is all about. Okay, only when k is equal to 3 or 13, uh, I mean, or negative 13, you will get repeated roots for your quadratic equation.